Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Welcome to the latest edition of Free Thought Hour. It's a bit of a scratch show today. We've had technical problems. For a start, Tercia got this most wonderful guest. She is a teacher of music to the blind. And honestly, the, the interview that we made is really good. But <laughs> I joined in half an hour late because of the fact that the planet is round. So I was told one time and it wasn't that time because I'm in a different zone. So we did a, a recording back in the week when it was convenient for our guest. Not going to be a live uh, show with her because uh, she's busy on a Saturday at this time. So we have a, a piece of video in the can, as it were. But before I joined in, Tercia recorded her part of the interview with her. And unfortunately, thanks to her, the problems with electricity and connectivity in South Africa, she's not been able to send me the files of the video that she took. So it's going to be shorter than usual. But before we get into that, can I introduce, where is she? The floating head? <laughs> Come on, floating head. But she's not the floating head. She wouldn't do the green screen thing. I've got a joke for you. Thank you. Okay. Why so did the student eat his homework? Why did the student eat his homework? Yes. I have no idea. Because the teacher told him it was a piece of cake. <laughs> Where's my applause? I, <laughs> I've got an applause thingy here. I won't be able to find it. I'll do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, somewhere here I've got an applause thingy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and you're scrolling down. Uh, yeah, and I can't find it. Can I? Well, that was in, entirely to be expected. Never mind. Thank you for that floating head. <laughs> you, I'm the floating head. Yes, but you're not floating because you no. wouldn't do the green screen. <laughs> oh, honestly, you can't get the staff these days, can you? Okay, thank you, floating head. That's your job done. I might come in more. Oh, no. Do another joke, by the way. Oh, no. Do I need another joke? So, so what's happened is I've invited Tercia to join us, if she can. Obviously, that's not entirely within our control. But in the meantime, I want to update you on what I've been doing in my life because it's been hectic. Earlier on in the summer, in the beginning of June, in fact, now being the 1st of July, pinch punch, I staged an event in London with the co-sponsoring by uh, Lawrence Krauss of the Origins Project. And we had as our main celebrity top of the bill guest, Richard Dawkins, who my sister, my daughter, my younger daughter, um, gave a, an award to. That was fantastic. And videos of this are going up onto the Atheism UK channel as and when. If you want to get early views of them, you have to become a member of Atheism UK. But they will eventually be made public, and I will link to them from this channel. Okay, so back to tonight. Yes, I've got this video about the lady, the lovely lady, who, show, who, who spends her life teaching music to the blind. I'm going to screen it now. Here we go. Well, it's very nice to meet you, Joan. Thank you very much for doing this interview with Tosia and I. And uh, I'm sorry to be joining in late. It's it's due to the roundness thing, isn't it? So, it? It's entirely my fault. I will accept full responsibility because I'm out of my routine, John. We normally do this on a Saturday. And this is a Wednesday. Yeah. And it's freezing cold in Worcester. We haven't seen the sun in a week about, I think. But uh, Joan has a music lesson in 20 minutes, 25 okay. minutes. So so I've done some very nice um, uh, bits of interview that we will edit into our show. And um, you might want to ask Joan why she's not available on a Saturday evening for a live show. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> thus prompted, I will ask that very question. What do you do on a Saturday evening? Oh, yes, no, the, the Saturday evening was not so much the oh, it's, problem. It's just that it was a little bit late for me because I'm a very early riser. So oh, right. Yes. Half past nine to half past ten. I'm usually in bed by nine. Yeah, yes. Well, yes. me too. <laughs> of course, my nine is earlier. <laughs> oh, right. Quite. Yeah, yes, yeah. So I want to talk to you about teaching music to the blind because it's such a valiant job, isn't it? Eh? I mean, I, I've I've not taught music except you know chopsticks to my children, and. Uh, do you have chopsticks in South Africa? You know, oh, for you? Sure. Yes, <laughs> yes. And uh, but I have had a bit of a musical sub career, as you might call it. I was in a semi-professional band for a okay. long time ago now, forty years ago now. But I had a lovely time playing and singing in in a in a gigging band uh, that it meant so much to me. And I know that in the case of blind pupils. It's so very important because anything audiary is the major thing for them, isn't it? Well done. Yes. John, um, do you have perfect pitch? Do you know, I don't think, uh, this, is, this might be controversial, but I don't think there is such a thing as perfect pitch. Oh, you see, that's why we had to get John on. <laughs> so ask Let John me... about Perfect pitch. Let, John let, can tell you about perfect pitch. Let, let me expound on my view about this because I believe that I have had perfect pitch at various periods of my life when I was being very musical, and and I could tell I could tune instruments without reference to anything. You know, I, I could tell when I got my guitar in the right pitch, and it was in the right pitch, and I wasn't testing it against any standard. It was just my ear was telling me that this was how it should sound. But I couldn't do that now because, it's, you know, you have if you don't use it, you lose it, don't you? That is so, a fact. That is yeah. a fact. Yes. So yes, but when we talk about perfect pitch, we talk of um, the fourth octave A being four, 440 megahertz. Yes. The vibrations. Yes. 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 And, and it, is, it is something that can be variable. I was telling Tertia earlier that, when I was a kid, our piano was a whole tone out. So I yes. developed perfect pitch on that piano. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, of course, um, the, the, the standard pitch hasn't always been 440, has it? I mean, historically, it was 420 or uh, because they used to base it on the, the sound of uh, an A played on an oboe or a clarinet. Mm -hmm. and, and they redesigned clarinets. Historically, there was an earlier version of a clarinet, the Bohm system, which yes. had different fingering from the current one. But, right. you, you know, the, there has been changes. And, of mm -hmm. course, going, going way back, there wasn't even a perfect octave, was there? Because no. that's, that, that's thanks to Bach, who, who came <laughs> up with, with the well-tempered clavier. Clavier. Yes. Because, of course, although um, in terms of vibration, physics, there's, there's a perfect fifth, there's a perfect fourth, because they are actual fractions of yes. the root tone, there isn't a perfect second or third. Oh, hang on. Third, right. there, third there is, but second there isn't. Um, anyway, you have, to, you have to make up an average number of wavelengths to fit in between those that are actual fractions. Yes, so you have those 12 um, equal semitones, and that's why your medieval music played today sounds so so odd. Yes, <laughs> yes, indeed. A, perfect with, a person with today's perfect pitch would think it's completely out of tune. <laughs> yes, yes, they would. Yes, yes. Mm. Thank you. Well, for I'm, those si time machines. I, I'm sitting here with this expression on my face because um for for the first time i actually think i'm beginning to understand why people say that there's a strong connection between math and music yeah. I, I could never I, I mean i knew it and i accepted it but i could never really grasp but why and just listening to the two of you because I, music theory was not something 
I, I was I was telling Joan that I was very lazy. I was the music student from hell because I didn't practice. Oh. So um, yeah, it's, it's it's fascinating to to explore this this field that is at the same time familiar and unfamiliar because you John having um, played music um, semi professionally as well, oh. everybody loves music and everybody knows music but then it's all relative because the way that you and Joan talk about it I feel completely lost I was what the hell but you know <laughs> this is so interesting um, I found that there is definitely a strong link between music and and um, maths but particularly with the blind students because braille music notation is a much stronger cognitive element for the blind it's feely, not, isn't it? Yes, it's so feely. Yes. yes, and if they're not above average intelligence and if they're not good at maths, they won't cope with the Braille music notation. It is much well, more mathematically inclined than the sight of Yes, yes. So the other thing is, of course, that... Um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yes, latest theory suggests that uh, music, the... Well, certainly um, uh, melody, let's say melody, originated before speech. Have you, have you caught up with this? I, I, I know that, and that is why oh. a melody and singing helps people, especially women who oh. have had a stroke, and they, they can't speak, they get them to sing, and it brings it back. Yes, mm. that's right, yes. So people like um, Noam Chomsky, who studied language, uh, study the origin, the evolution of language. They've, they've. I'm not sure whether it's him specifically, but the people working in that field have come to the conclusion that before talking, before speech, there was singing. <laughs> you know, and it, it may not have been in the the human uh, ancestral line. It might have started before. Because, you know, we have howler monkeys, for example, and, and lots of birds that communicate, not so much in articulation, but in alteration of pitch. Yes, that so, is so interesting. Mm. But you know, what is also very interesting, why we use music for the blind is because it's, it structurally alters the brain. They've done a lot of experimentation and yes. they've examined the brain with all different people who have done different careers in their life. And only music, professional musicians' brains, altered as a result of having done music. That really? corpus callosum, the channel between the two hemispheres of the brain, changes, yes. becomes thicker, wider, stronger, and, and um, so multitasking becomes much easier. That is why oh, boys, who do more, boys who do music we usually can't multitask. Their coordination improves amazingly, even in sport. Well, that is interesting because mm -hmm. the corpus callosum, what you've just talked about, that, con that connects between the two hemispheres, is also measurably larger in women than in men. Exactly. <laughs> and in female elephants. <laughs> but why? Why, why, would, why would it be? Is, is it because the mommies sing to the babies? <laughs> Because oh, come on. No, we, we can't cancer. answer. Don't ask why. Don't, don't, there is no scientist can't answer why. I'm sorry. That's, <laughs> no, that's it, it's a taboo it's question. Because, it's just because we're smarter, John. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Yes, yes. It's two against one, so you can try your Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been banged up on. <laughs> Yes, it's. I, I often joke to to John not only about the men and man and women thing, also about the um, see the colonizer and the colonized. So oh. I, I'm I'm very slowly recolonizing the UK through John's free thought <laughs> hour. But um, so the elements of music. So okay, let me just take one step back. Something that fascinates me as a teacher is the whole idea of reading and reading with comprehension. And I wonder if one of the problems that we have a situation worldwide, in South Africa in particular, 84% of 10-year-olds cannot read with comprehension. Yeah. And if, I wonder if the fact that we, we 
there's so little emphasis on teaching music in schools, if that plays any role, because I don't, I think we've severed the link between um, music and uh, maths and reading and we, we've, we've put things in boxes in terms of how we teach kids and I'm not talking about blind kids now I'm talking about how we teach in general um, what, what would, because listening to you two uh, talking about music and knowing that it it, it does um, improve one's memory there's definite benefits to a child yeah. just learning to play even something as simple as a recorder you know um, what would you say to that, Joan? Um, I would say that um, I've discovered in, in my experience that um, learners who have very good ears for music don't tend to be such good readers because uh, they depend on their ears. Yes, yes, yes. And, and vice versa. I find that people who are very, very good readers just don't have as good ears. Well, that and is so, interesting. That is why uh, we, we have problems actually teaching the blind to, re to read the music very often because they have such super hearing yes, that yes. Why would you need the reading becomes an impediment. Well, if they have right. a perfect yeah. pitch and perfect memory just about, they learn yeah. the stuff by ear instantly, whereas yes. it takes them ages to actually learn to read it. Yes, yes, yes. Well, that, that certainly matches with my personal experience and, and that of Sir Paul McCartney, who to this day, claims that he can't read the dots, you know? I mean, <laughs> why would you need to read the dots? Music is a hearing thing. It's nothing to do with, with your eyes. And uh, I personally, I had a music teacher from about the age of seven, I suppose. But then when I was about the age of eight, I, I'd done grade one in the, what's it called, the LRM, whatever Royal Schools of Music, yes. That's, that's the one, yes. And, mm -hmm. and I... I was going to be, I was going to miss out grade two and go and be put into grade three, according to my teacher. Um, and, and then she had to give up that work, I'm afraid. She was over, oh. she was she was too busy. She was stressed with uh, too much to do. And her doctor advised her to quit some things. And one of the things she quit was teaching me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the thing is that I always wanted to be shown. This was piano. So I always wanted to be shown what to do with my fingers rather than to try and make sense of this mysterious, <laughs> mysterious sequence of black and white, which didn't really matter. And then, of course, later on in my life, I picked up the guitar. And although there is music for guitar, not many people use it. It's quite difficult to relate from the page to the instrument. So everybody plays a guitar yes. by ear. And, yes. and I found that was great. And I got to a stage where I could listen to music and I could, I could pick out the chord sequence in my head. And I knew even quite complicated chords I could recognize, you know, um, what should we say, F minor sus four or whatever it was. You know, I could, I could hear all the intervals individually that, that were in that chord. And I wish I could have taught you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you well, play the guitar as well? I did a bit. More too classical late. guitar. Too, too late. I'm way past that phase of my life. <laughs> I probably couldn't stand up long enough to play a guitar in a band anymore. <laughs> oh, yes. Tiring. I, I want to ask about um, percussion. So, mm. mel melody... I mean, melody is an element of music, as is rhythm. And I'm, I'm just talking out of my thumbs up here because I really don't know any. But can, can one play a melody with the drums? You, you can't. It's not possible, is it? Well, well, that's again an incredibly uh, intelligent question because mm. the most important element or criterion for, um, for determining musicality is rhythm. So if you don't have a sense of rhythm, you can be the most beautiful singer. You can even have perfect pitch for that matter. Yeah. But if you don't yeah. have rhythm, you, you'll be a useless musician. Yeah. Okay, so that explains rhythm. me because, I mean, I, I have no rhythm whatsoever at all, none. <laughs> rhythm came first. Rhythm came before melody. And, before melody. and I'd, I'd like to mention at this point Evelyn Glennie. Joan, you will have heard of Evelyn Glennie. Not really. <laughs> Sorry. No, she's a very famous deaf drummer. 
Oh, oh, and, just works on vibration. Okay. Yes, she feels it mainly through her yes. solar plexus and abdomen yes. area. Yes. Uh, but she's professional. I've seen her perform. It is fan dot tas dot tick dot. It is. I mean, if you can get to see any of her stuff, do so. I'm wow. sure she's I'm sure she's on YouTube. Yes, but she is oh. one. Mm. Well, we were talking about uh, teaching deaf blind students because we do with the the center. There's also a center for the deaf deaf blind. Mm. But I want to ask about. Um, so rhythm came before melody. Now, do you think it has something to do with heartbeat? Does it? Yes, it does. Does it? Does it relate back back to the to to that? Is it that primal? Very likely. Yes. We're speculating. Mm -hmm. We can't actually do that experiment, but it's very likely. Yes. Okay, it's very mm -hmm. likely. The yeah. first instrument was obviously the drum. Even animals would take a stick and yes, yes, and 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 beat in in rhythm but yes. um yeah the the basic heartbeat the average heartbeat is 60 beats per second and that is yes. your your average yes if you yes. set your metronome at at one beat um, per second that is yes. your average mm. beat um john do you do any music therapy um here or is it a huge is, amount is... every day <laughs> Well, teaching deaf blind children is music therapy. It's often more for enrichment than that they are going to be yes. a world performer. Yes. And yes. Of course, no. Out of drumming comes dancing. Yes. And if you there's some wonderful videos that you can watch of dancing parrots. Oh yes, I have seen that. It's yes. mind bogglingly interesting. Yes. Yes. If they know rhythm, they're stamping and bobbing, yes, joining in. Yes. They do. Well, Joan is um, due for a lesson. Yes. She's going to do some therapy. <laughs> <laughs> so on, on that note, um, I'm so sorry, John, that due to my um, forgetting that the earth is in fact round, uh, <laughs> you only came in at the last half an hour. Uh, perhaps we should, uh, we can always try to reschedule again because I was fascinated listening to the two of you. I felt like a real ignoramus. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> Because um, uh, there's so much I'd still like to pick jo Joan's brain about, which I fortunately can do because I am just, in fact, I'm going to be living to houses from Joan's office one of these uh, beautiful days. Oh. Oh. So, Joan, yeah. I would like to thank you for your time. It's been fantastic. You're welcome. And mm. I hope you can perhaps do this again. And maybe you and John can get together and we can do a sort of little impromptu um we can give john a set of drums and he can uh try to, to we can we can do some music and maybe i must just make an appointment with joan and see if she can't teach me to play the piano a little less badly than i do currently yes so, well yes. unfortunately the bad news is it takes about 10 years to master any <laughs> instrument including the voice <laughs> well I never said I wanted to master it. I just wanted to get less bad than I currently am. And I must say that even though I play very badly, I find that it relaxes me because when oh. I play the piano, I have to focus on playing the piano and it's impossible to focus on other worries and teenagers that drive me up the wall. And yes. Um, so, yes. But, Joan, it was fantastic. Thank it you was. so much. Mm, yes, and thank thanks you. for your 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 profoundly insightful questions and it was a pleasure and a stimulating meeting you john <laughs> i've loved it yes thank you for joining us what i'm going to do is collect t tercia's file mash this all together into an episode with a nice ending for you to give you credit joan okay. thank you. And, and if you want anything uh advertised i don't know whether you've got a book or website your job your business or whatever we can incorporate that as well Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you, John. Blessings Good. both of you. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye to our audience. See you soon. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, Bye everyone. Wasn't that fun? What a lovely lady and what a valiant profession. Teaching music to the blind. Such a good thing to be doing. And of course, you really don't need eyes in order to become superb at music as uh, people like Stevie Wonder and before him, Ray Charles have shown us. 
Anyway, this is pretty much all I've got to uh, present to you tonight. It's tonight here where I am. And uh, all I need to do now is to try to promote next week's show, which hopefully will feature another musician, Dan Barker. I don't know if you know about Dan, but he is the key, a key person in um, Freedom From Religion, FFR, and he's an escaped uh, Christian who was so involved at one stage, he wrote a couple of musicals for Christian audiences. And so he, he's a gifted musician. I'm really looking forward to talking to him. At the moment, he's checking with his wife whether he's available to join us at the right time next week. So let's hope that that works out. And that's what we'll do. We'll look forward to seeing you then. Thank you for watching. <laughs>